Hello and welcome to this repair tutorial and today we're going to look at a Sonos smart speaker and the model number is a Play 3. So for this unit they've sold in very very good numbers and again available on auction websites and they sort of retail even second hand probably about 80 upwards to about 120 pounds sort of circa depending of course on the condition. Uh, it's available in two colours this one being the white one which came into the workshop but also it's available in a black as well so just sort of general specification so it is a Wi-Fi connected smart speaker and the amplification is via a stereo times 3 amplifier and it's a class D output and the amplifier or the three individual amplifiers drive three sets of speakers so what you have is two three inch mid-range and there's also a tweeter and then you also have ethernet connectivity as well so you can connect if you wish via the port and that will be 10 or 100 megabits per second and then when you look on the top of it you have um, real simplistic controls so there is a button which effectively you can press to mute the device and then also the increment and then decrement for the volume control because it's a smart speaker it can also have a stand this unit of course didn't come into the workshop with that but at the rear of it you have a quarter inch thread mount and then overall weight is 2.43 kilograms and then dimension wise its height is 132 by width 268 and then the depth on the unit is 160 millimeters so this unit came in via you know a close personal friend and I've also put in the description link details of the other Sonos unit which was repaired really the, around the same time period and the report was that the device didn't switch on at all so normal things of course you'll check is the power coming into the unit and sure enough you know there was no issue or concern there and then if you sort of do some Google searches and this sort of really is a couple of things the first one is that if you do a Google search the first thing that comes or becomes apparent is that Sonos don't appear to offer any sort of repair service as such and you see a lot of sort of blogs from different people where maybe they've opened up the device and then finally got in contact and then they said well because you've removed the security sticker then it's no longer covered and we wouldn't ascertain repairing it the other strange thing is that there appears to be no spare parts available either which is very odd you know, when you sell in high numbers as a manufacturer you know normally you you have a service tail and you're able to provide spare parts you know for the equipment that you sell but no no spare parts available and then the next sort of head scratcher is often you would find there would be service data so there's there's going to be at least some schematic or a service manual or some information but nope not none of that all right so here we kind of back to sort of uh, I'd sort of say 101 fault finding so there's no schematics and no sort of inside information but what you do find on the forums and then the websites is that people are showing uh, the power supply board and the failure of the power supply board so of course here what I'm now showing you is what I found when you know I actually dismantled the unit but before we sort of get into the details, the question, of course, is if you're unfamiliar with taking these things apart, how do you get into it? Because it seems on the face of it to be a sealed unit. Well, the way in which you do that is you just need to take a small tool with a, a small hook on and you have to remove the front grill plate. Now, what I would tell you to avoid is any form of flat blade screwdriver. Don't put that down the sides because you're going to damage the grill. Also as well, the way in which it pushes into the bezel is you have multiple tabs. And if the unit's quite old, you may well find this sort of, um, it's, I'd say it's almost like a, a mastic type material which holds it in place. If that has dried out, then it's going to be easier to remove. For this unit, it hadn't fully dried out, so there's still you know a lot of elasticity to it. But you just got to work at those edges and then as soon as you get a little bit of movement, then you can then just prise up the grill and it will not distort it and then what you'll then find is a series of screws so once you remove those what you're able to do is to uh, disconnect the speakers from the main board and then just lift it out of the way and then um, once you've done that 
when you look at the power supply board again you will disconnect the multi-pin connector which connects it to the amplification board and, and the smart electronics part and then the power supply has two fixing screws which are right next or right on top of the power input socket once you remove those two screws you have two plates and they're just simply plastic plates with groove edges on and they go over both the amplifier board and then also the power supply board so once you remove those plastic plates a total of six screws in all for the two side plates and the power input socket you can then just slide out the power supply now just to give some sort of insight as to what's going on here well first off is the the component or the capacitors that have been used in the design of the amplifier sorry in the, in the design of the power supply are very very low cost so these are low cost chinese type capacitors and they will always fail it's not a case of if it's only when and the when is of course the bit that you don't know and it's not a case that the power supply capacitors on the switch mode side just simply fail and then the unit you know goes off what happens is it happens over time so these electrolytic capacitors start to leak electrolyte and this is what I'm showing in the video through the series of photographs so what has happened is that the electrolytic capacitors have leaked and the electrolyte then has soaked into the circuit board now the electrolyte is conductive and then the main power supply board also is dual layer it has two circuit tracks one internal within the fiberglass board and then one external if you flip it over so here the electrolyte of course has leaked it's soaked in and then that has created the path and then the current has started to pass through the soaked electrolyte board and it's become more and more conductive and you could see signs of this not only on the board that I'm showing here but also um, internally so it's, it's like it had been sort of smoking away to the point that the circuit board track failed and then that cut off of course the supply then and the unit went dead now you will see this on any of these Sonos units and it may not be as bad as this one as you can see you know it came to a point where sometimes when you get electrolyte leakage you may be able to cut out a small section of the circuit board and then fill it in with an epoxy resin and then make good with an electrical you know wire connection the level of damage on this board was so severe that that was just not an option so the only issue the only thing that you can do is to source a donor board and this is a common terminology often in things like sort of um, iPhone repairs or maybe you know Apple devices or PCs where a repair company will have you know multiple circuit boards and what they'll do is they'll take components from those circuit boards and they use them as donor components here I was able to source a donor board but of course as I've mentioned many times in the repair tutorials you have to build some longevity back into the repair so I could have just took the donor board and plugged it in and then complete the repair but I know that this issue with the failure of these low cost capacitors will happen again so to prevent that what I've done is a two stage approach the first one of course is to remove the capacitors from the donor board and this is what I'm sort of doing and then what I've then done is I've just cleaned the board up and I'll show you now as you can see even the removed capacitors from the donor board had started to fail there were already signs that the insulation the rubber insulation was starting to give up and these capacitors were then you know going to leak once I've cleaned the board up what I've then done is I've put some insulation tape over the area so even if in the future the capacitors do fail and then leak there is a degree of protection which will prevent the electrolyte ideally from soaking into the board but remember when you're removing the uh, defective capacitors this is a dual layer board so what you'll see is that the circuit tracks connect through from the bottom and then into like the center part of the board and then up and these veers you have to avoid any kind of damage so what I would say is ideally use a desoldering station but if you're going to use a manual operated desolder pump just flow as much solder onto the connections as you can 
and then they should come across or come away nice and smooth. You don't want to damage them. And then what I've done here is I've sourced high grade electrolytic capacitors. So these three capacitors are 33 microfarad each, but they are rated at 400 volts. So they're working extremely hard because they're on the high voltage section of the switch mode. And the type that I've fitted here are Rubicons. So these are certified genuine original Rubicon capacitors and that's what have been uh, been placed into there. Now once that was done and I'll tell you that even on the donor board and you can kind of see this in the video I never understand why manufacturers do this but you know they've not used this sort of old sort of conductive glue you know which turns corrosive over time. Now what they've done is they've used silicon rubber you know so they, they've, they've used that which is the same sort of stuff that maybe you would seal a shower with and they put that over multiple components and they've also put it in between the electrolytic capacitors so in terms of repair you just got to take a little bit of time it's best to take you know something like a craft knife and then just cut through the silicon rubber so it's not touching either of the other components and then as i said you know just be very careful not to damage the via when you desolder them so once that was done, rather than put the power supply into the smart speaker and power up, I simply did a bench test. So I always power it up via the dim bulb tester and there was no illumination coming on so it wasn't drawing any excess current. And also as well you can see um, in the series of photographs there is also a small Wickman fuse as well which is near to the second electrolytic capacitor. But that was verified and, you know, that wasn't sort of open circuit or anything like that. So although it was a donor board, I'm just verifying that the donor board was fully working before it was then reinstalled. And once that was done, functional test with the power supply out of, out of the unit. And then it's just a case of just the reassemble them. So a bit of insight for yourselves. Again, not a very, very complicated repair. But for people who are doing a generic search, maybe on Google, you know, for Sonos Play 3, particularly if the unit will not power on, or even if you can't get, it's more like an electrical smell type odour, that will indicate that the power supply is starting to fail. Um, and I think it's a bit, yeah, it's not ideal. And when I say it's not ideal, these units are not inexpensive. And I always think on the side of the consumer. So if you're going to pay a reasonable sum of money then you would expect you know some better components in there and the electrical capacitors really you know the, the difference between a low cost capacitor and say a Japanese high quality capacitor is not that great so I'm not sure why manufacturers would sort of want to skimp on that but it is what it is so once the unit was reassembled you know it's quite easy just to do a functional test on it and uh, also the uh, final clean. So once all done, simple matter, then of returning it back to uh, my friend along with the uh, other unit, which, uh, as I say, I've put the link in the description below. So I thank you for stopping by and appreciate um, you just taking the time. And if you have any questions or you need any insight, by all means, send an email to audio amplifier servicing at AOL.com and I'll be happy to come back and answer any questions that you may have. So until the next time, cheers and bye-bye.